till now, we've only been working with GET requests. So all of the HTTP requests we've sent to our API all have been GET requests. And so now we're gonna learn about POST requests. And they're a little bit different, and I wanna kinda highlight what makes POST requests different than GET requests. Now, we're gonna compare the two right now, and I've drawn out a little diagram for us. So at the left side, we've got our web browser, or it could be our mobile device, depending on whatever the front end is. And on the right side, we've got our API server. So this is our fast API server. Now with a GET request, what we do is we just send an HTTP GET request, and then we send that to our API server, and then our API server sends back uh, some kind of data, depending on what they're trying to get. So if they're trying to get a whole bunch of posts, we send back the posts. Now with a POST request, it's gonna be similar, except there's one minor difference. And that is that with a POST request, we can send data to the API server. So in this case, a lot of times what you'd use a POST request for is for creating things. So if I want to create a POST, I would, and when I say POST, I mean like a social media POST, not POST as in POST request. But if I wanted to create a, a social media POST, I would send an HTTP POST request, and I would include all of the data needed to create a POST on my API server. So we'll send that data over to the API server, and the API server will send back whatever data it thinks it needs to send. And so in real life, if we were trying to create a post, you, we would include whatever data we needed for a post. So in this case, we would include what's the title of the post, what's the content of the post, what's the user of the post. We send that to the API server. The API can, server can then talk to whatever database to actually create the post, and then it can send back some data, you know, something like, hey, I've successfully created the post, um, and then here's the final post after I create it, and then send, that de send those details back to your web browser or your mobile devices. So think of it like this. A GET request is basically saying, hey, API server, give me some data. Whereas a POST request is saying, hey, API server, here's some data, do whatever you need to do with it. So it's like, so it really controls the direction uh, of flow of data uh, between the front end and the API server. So GET requests are getting data from the API server, whereas a POST request is sending data to the API server. So now that we have a basic understanding of how POST requests work, let's go back to our code and see if we can create a path operation for a POST request. So let's go below our last path operation, which was for getting posts, and let's create one for creating posts. So first things first, let's uh, let's just actually create our decorator first. So we'll do app dot, and instead of guest, uh, sorry, instead of get, we're gonna say post. So that's all it takes to convert a traditional get request to a POST request. You just say dot post, and then once again, we're gonna say whatever specific URL the user should go to to actually create the post. Uh, now I'm gonna do something a little bit bad. I'm gonna say the path that we wanna go to is called create posts. And if you've ever worked with APIs, this is kind of going against best practice, but don't worry, we'll correct this in the next lesson um, because there are certain best practices. It's not gonna break our application by any means. Uh, we'll say this and then we'll say def and then here we'll just name our function. I'll just say create post. Like I said, the name of the function never matters. And then here, we're, we're, all we're going to do is we're going to return, uh, we'll say message, whoops, message, and then uh, we'll say successfully created posts. So let's save that, and let's go to our uh, postman. And so we've got already one request, so I could just change this to post. And then uh, we have to change the URL in this case. So we'll go back and see it's at create posts. So it's going to be at create posts. And let's hit send and let's see what happens. Look at that message successfully created. So we have successfully sent a post request to our API. Now, one thing I like to do with Postman is that you can create multiple requests and then have them saved. So um, I'm going to actually change this back to just go to posts and then go to get, and then we'll keep that. And what we can do is we can just add another request. And so I'm just gonna copy the URL here. I'm gonna paste this. And then this is actually going to be create posts. And then this is gonna be a post request. And so now we can hit a get request and then hit a post request really quickly because they're essentially, uh, we've got them in two different windows. And let's just quickly double check. That still works, that's good. And then let's double check a get post. That still works, perfect. Now that's cool and all, However, the whole idea behind a POST request is to send some data to our API server. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to our POST request. And what we wanna do is um, we wanna send some data in the body of the request. And to do that, 
within uh, Postman, you would go to the body section right here. And then within body, what we want to do is go to raw and then select the type. And normally when you're working with APIs, um, you want to use JSON. However, you can use a XML and a few others. However, most people use JSON. So we'll select JSON. And then we'll do, and, and JSON looks very, it, it operates very similarly to a Python dictionary. So it's, uh, you know, curly braces, and then it's going to be a whole bunch of key value pairs. So here I'll say, what's the title of my post? Well, title of my post is going to be, say, uh, we'll say top beaches in Florida. And then the content of the post is going to say, check out these awesome beaches. All right. And so now. If we hit send, let's see what happens. Great. So it says successfully create a post. We successfully um, hit this endpoint, but in our path operation, how do we actually extract the data that we sent in the body? How do we retrieve that body data? Well, what we can do is within our path operation function, I can say, uh, I can just assign it some variable. So what variable do we want to store all that body data? You can pick any name you want. I'm just going to say this represents payload. Although like it could be something like body or anything else. So we'll say payload. And then what we want to do is colon. And then we want to say it's going to be of a type dict. And we want to set this equal to body. And we want to import this. So this is actually something that comes from the fast API library. So if you do tab, if you hit tab, it's going to automatically import it. Or you can select it. So you hit body. And then do that and then triple dots. And just to keep in mind, right, if you see that from fast API params, it imported body. So what this is going to do is uh, it's going to extract all of the fields from the body. It's going to basically convert it to a Python dictionary and it's going to store it inside a variable named payload. Pretty simple. And all we have to do is let's say print. Let's just print out payload. Now, if we hit that post request again, look at this uh, right here. We can see that it converted into a Python dictionary and we extracted the title field as well as the content field. And so that's how we extract the data from the body of the payload. All right. And just to quickly recap, once again, we imported body from fastapi.params, and we let VS Code do it automatically for us. I always recommend letting VS Code do it for you so that you don't have to memorize uh, and remember you know, where in the FastAPI library uh, this, uh, this property is stored. So we're taking this, taking the body, and, and then we're converting it into a dictionary, and then we're storing it inside a property called payload, but you can name this whatever you want. And so what we can do is we can take this data, and then we can say, um, let's say we're going to return back a uh, new, uh, new post, and then we're just going to send the data. So we'll say title, and we can actually change this to a F string. And we'll say title. And then we can pass in payload. Uh, and you'll see that it's, uh, we can just reference the title property. because it's just a regular Python dictionary. And we'll say that the content is going to be payload content. So let's save that. And then now let's hit send. Now look at this, we got our new post and it sent, whoops, it looks like I made a mistake. Yeah, no, actually, that's correct. Title, top beaches in Florida. Content, check out these awesome beaches. So that's pretty simple, guys. I showed you guys how to not only send data in the body within a Postman request, we're also able to extract that data and send it right back to the user. Now, in a real application, we would take the data and then we would normally store that data inside our database so that we can create a new post stored in the database. And then now anytime the user tries to retrieve the post, we can fetch that data from the database. We don't have a database set up just yet. So for now, I'm just showing you guys how to extract that data and then send it back in the request.